I'm not a, a, a Muslim scholar. I'm an architect who believes in Islam and who believes that simply Islam is meant to change people. Change a man and let him do whatever he can do. He should do it in a proper way. All religions are after an ethical system. So the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, said to him, demolish that. Uh, Imam al-Tahawi, the, the Muslim scholar, said, this might be out of abhorrence of towering up above people's homes because of uh, people's houses were short and he built something higher than their homes. The, it, it, stood it, was, it stood out. That's it. Exactly. You, you grasp what I want to uh, get to. Yes. We are not here to be distracted. I stress on that point. Distraction, distraction is um, a game of uh, shaitan, of Satan. He, he's a distractor. No, uh, the, and the problem, the problem is not just a problem of the victim human being of consumerism and uh, uh, capitalism and modernity. Even the capitalist is a victim of himself. So welcome everyone to episode two of our talk, the impact of the reality of heritage and architecture from an Islamic perspective. Um, I leave it to you, Engineer Tariq. Okay. Uh... Uh, this is the in, in the in the in the uh, first uh, part of this uh, episode. I'm going to make my fifth and uh, the last example I'm going to give about the impact how a heritage impacts uh, architecture and design uh, from uh, uh, in a deep way from my point of view. That's my my point of view. Uh, so I'm going to talk about something very interesting and something that uh, most of us architects uh, uh, holds dearly, which is the courtyard. So uh, the, the title of this uh, example is the courtyard, the sky, and the concept of dwelling. In, in, in uh, our uh, last episode, we, we talked about simplicity. And we said that simplicity and modesty is one of the key factors of building in a proper way, in an Islamic way, in a wise way. Uh, one more key factor of uh, 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 good and righteous and uh, wise architecture is fulfilling uh, the concept of or the idea of, or the mean, the, 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 uh, the end of dwelling. dwelling. Uh, uh, the courtyard, the sky, and the concept of dwelling. Uh, God says, وَكَأَيٍ مِنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا هُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ The translation of that is, and how many signs, signs, ayat, signs, ayat, in the heavens and the earth, do they pass by? Yet they turn their faces away, they turn away from them. And also Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا السَّمَاءَ سَقْفًا مَحْفُوظًا وَهُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِهَا مُعْرِضُونَ is, uh, Allah is criticizing uh, uh, people uh, for getting away or turning away from His signs. Uh, the translation uh, of this verse is, and we have made the heavens as a canopy, well guarded, yet they, uh, yet do they turn away from the signs which these things point to. Uh, the sense uh, that these signs are displayed is, uh, comes in the next verse, uh, verse it is we who have set out the zodiacal signs in the heavens and made them fair seeming to all beholders. Fair seeming, zina. Now comes we come to the idea of zina, uh, uh, adornment in a positive way. So the skies are a sign, 
and the skies are Zina. Uh, they are not just meant uh, um, um, uh, in a functional way. They are meant in an effective and aesthetic. The, 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 the skies have an aesthetic uh, dimension. So, uh, certainly the human connection with the sky is an innate, fitri, and fundamental connection. The sky, in the way it lies over the earth, represents place, the second element of being together with time. We live in time and place, so uh, the sky is one of the elements of place, earth and sky. God always talks about the as-samawati wal-ard, together. They are always mentioned together, because the elements of place are as-samawati wal-ard. We're going to see this in a very interesting way. For most people, not just Muslims, the sky signifies the unseen, al-ghayb. The unseen with all it means, the unseen with its secrets, and the hope sought from it, the hope it represents. The unseen, metaphorically, is the direction towards God, the direction towards the gods the direction towards Allah the Almighty in Islam. When the messenger, peace upon, be upon him, asked the little girl, saying, where is Allah? Uh, she simply answered in the sky, and he approved this answer. The sky is the highest place located above the material place, all material place. And Allah the Almighty is the most high and the most great, not physically, for he transcends place and time, but in status and on. Uh, 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 Allah says, Sabbah isma rabbika al-a'la, glorify the name of, the God, of your, thy guardian Lord, most high. Uh, the French writer and pilot Antoine uh, de saint Exupéry said, Sarily, a man needs a closed place wherein he may strike root and like the seed, become, but also he needs the great Milky Way above him and the vast seas, uh, sea spaces. Though neither stars nor ocean serves his daily needs. He's talking about the effective and the aesthetic uh, dimension uh, to the universe. How true is this? Uh, is the saying of the Saint Exupéry on the Arab man when he uh, chooses to settle down and builds himself a home in a town? Uh, he carried with him his longing for the, the vast sky, so he decided to bring it inside his home by making the courtyard in the middle of the house. This is one of the most important uh, uh, reasons of building courtyards. Uh, completely enclosed to the outside and open to his beloved sky, thus connecting the tangible and limited man made uh, place with the infinite place created by God. Hazm Fathi, the renowned Egyptian architect in his study, very important study called the Arab Hall in Kairin Houses, has a very significant say, and I quote, man's connection with the sky and his evocation of it is older than the Arab man. It is as old as the presence of man altogether on earth. That is from the day when Adam, peace be upon him, landed on earth and built the Kaaba, the ancient house of Allah, receiving the skies into the earth in his longing for his lost paradise and the gracious face of his Lord. Now, the, the Kaaba being uh, the house of Allah, and why uh, Allah has a house on earth, and what does it represent, and uh, what is the relationship of Allah to the Kaaba, that's another thing we can, we can have a, a separate podcast and think about that. But uh, uh, man's connection with the sky is related to his longing for peace, manifested in his need to dwell. Dwelling, then, is the purpose of building, and with it, architecture. It is beyond the material dimensions related to engineering, construction methods, building materials, and even the various decisions governing the choice of some 
uh, formal matters uh, that is uh, that has to do with the form and shape of architecture. In all of these uh, aspects, if all of these aspects do not lead to the condition of dwelling, which is in Arabic called second, then architecture would not have achieved its desired goal. But is dwelling just being in harmony with earth and nature and not harming them to achieve the concept of sparing, preserving, and remaining at peace formulated by Heidegger, which is the reality of dwelling from the point of view of Islam? What really is dwelling? Sakan. It is not a coincidence that in the Arabic language the word Sakan meaning dwelling, is the root that means both a dwelling, maskan, a dwelling. So dwelling means a dwell comes, is the root of a dwelling, a house, a home, uh, meaning a physical home, and its derivative, yaskun, meaning to dwell. Man appreciates the signs of the universe, nature, and needs to live amongst them, always receiving them and the meaning they represent. The role is to remind him continuously of what is deeply inscribed in his pure original nature. Fitra Salima, his, his innate, pure, uh, original nature. Just as the human being does not feel right, comfortable, or at ease, and uh, rest, unless certain material needs, such as uh, satiety, uh, irrigation, and warmth, and so on, the human soul also does not dwell and come to peace unless its sufficient psychological, moral, and spiritual needs are provided for. The soul is constantly searching for the meaning of its existence in the signs. That's why authentic places and buildings, because they amplify the signs, interact with the human soul, uh, commun communicate and speak to it, always potentially and intimately. So, architecture, has so many layers to it, construction, um, uh, function, uh, materials, uh, uh, climatic control, uh, shelter, but it has a, a, a moral and an effective uh, dimension and layer to it. Uh, one of the things I, I thought about is that a, a, a building, a proper building, because we cannot escape architecture, because it represents place. So it's an amplifier of the science. Uh, just as uh, like we, we experience in nature, nature speaks of us to the science, the birds, the skies, the trees, the, 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 the natural order, it all if we contemplate it in a, in a wise way, it speaks of a creator. It, it speaks of um, uh, an entity uh, that uh, presents itself to the human being. So good architecture also uh, amplifies the signs. And this is the way a courtyard works. A courtyard brings the, the sky into the inside of the house. The soul longs for remembrance, and the signs are the best reminder. This is a very important concept. The word ayat in Arabic means both verses and signs. The signs confront man to witness an, an aesthetic and sublime experience which moves him as nothing else does with its magnificence. The soul of man, the great creation of Allah, does not and will not come to peace and experiences a feeling of reassurance unless it remembers the great and most noble meaning in existence, which lies behind every sign in the world, the meaning of La ilaha illallah, there is no God but God. Only then and there can that soul find rest. Now this is very important. Why is that? Why when, when the signs point to other signs, and other signs point to other signs, and then the, all the signs uh, point to the Creator and point to Allah. Uh, uh, because this is the truth, simply. And I said before that Islam is all about the truth. Uh, um, 
the, the human being is often meaning. Viktor Frankl, the, 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 the famous uh, psychiatrist uh, who spent like five years in Nazi concentration camps, he wrote a very interesting book. Uh, I think it's called uh, Man's uh, Search for Meaning or... Uh, yes. Yeah. And he, the, his conclusion is that what keeps these uh, poor prisoners alive, what kept them alive, what kept them pre persevering and uh, uh, um, uh, going through all these uh, yani difficult times is a meaning they hold to. So what is the most noble meaning? The most noble meaning is truth. Things as they are. Things as they really are. Not things as something else. So what, uh, from a Muslim perspective, and that explains why I, the title has from an Islamic perspective, and the disclaimer I made, why we are, we are speaking with, uh, an, from an Islamic perspective, from the domain of Islam, we are, we are not going, uh, we are not philosophizing in uh, an open way that does not um, uh, 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 have solid foundations in a be belief system uh, that is uh, uh, deeply rooted and have deep foundations in yeah, what we believe. Knowledge. Yes. Can I, can I, can I uh, echo what you're saying with something before you move on? When you speak about second, I think that is, that is part of the, one of the main truths that we are talking about, about why architecture, why to build and how to architecture or how to build. This idea of second, it, is, it has many meanings in the Arabic language. It is to accommodate, it is to quiet something down, to alleviate pain, it is to calm someone down. And we have the verse, uh, he created spouses from, from yourselves so that you can have a calming with them, to find an abode with them, and to alleviate the pain in them. Yeah, you can say the, the second of the four, the whole dwelling, the whole being, the whole It came to rest. Yes. It came to its final destination. Yes. It doesn't need to move any further. And it is, is, it's as if, from what you're saying, the built environment in its, in its entirety is supposed to be a place or something man-made that alleviates the pains of life, which is the nature of the world, to go through pain and to be tested as to how will you react to that pain or even to react to the good things you have been given. It's to alleviate yeah. the pain, the suffering, and to find rest in the daily strife that you have. And so, if the built environment does not fulfill this function of second, this alleviation of pain, this tranquility, this provision of calmness, as the skies do, as the very silence of the trees do, as the chirping of the birds do, as even the howling of the hurricanes do in their, in, with all of their might, they still provide a kind of second in how you see the world going from a majeur to a minor, and you see all of that, then the built environment did not fulfill its purpose of second, and therefore it is not true. Architecture has a high um, uh, purposes. Uh, it should guide you by amplifying the signs towards your truth in the afterlife. It should comfort you in this life uh, it should entertain you in the positive sense of entertainment. You sit in a nice place having a cup of coffee, you know, the birds are uh, around you and the trees are moved by the, by the uh, breeze. This is architecture. You know, it shelters you. This is architecture. But I mean, uh, a shelter is not really architecture for architects. Architects are always looking for something more, something more human, something more related to the immaterial dimension that all of us have. You see, Christopher, uh, Christopher Alexander, uh, no, no, not Christopher Alexander, uh, 
let me think, uh, uh, Christian Norvig Schultz, the Norwegian um, architect and thinker, who is uh, affected by Heidegger um, uh, profoundly, he has a, a very nice definition to architecture. He says architecture is the concretization, making think something manifested, the concretization of existential place, of the place that is not just material. Concretization of existential place where dwelling is the purpose. So without dwelling, you have no architecture. In the, in the, the so you have building, you, you don't even have building because building and architecture are, you know, synonymous. You have a edifice or a construction or, a, you know, a machine for living. Like Le yes. Corbusier said, a machine for living. No, a building is not a machine for living because uh, the human being is not a robot. Well, uh, Christian Norbert Schultz and, uh, uh, brings us to Heidegger, and I'm, I, I'm going to talk about Heidegger. Let us now return to Heidegger in his famous essay, Building Dwelling Thinking. He's still thinking, questioning, and speaking in his search for the true meaning of dwelling. Heidegger was very intelligent. Heidegger came very close to the truth of Muslims' belief, uh, uh, of the truth Muslims believe in. His ideas were certainly be benefitous. Dwelling from his point of view is, achieving by, uh, is achieved by maintaining what he calls the fourfold. This is not Islamic, this is not Muslim, but this is a wise man thinking. This is a man who is a multi-dimensional multi-dimension, man who came very close to the truth. He did not cross the border of Islam. He did not become a Muslim. Because as Muslims, we believe that our path is the best path. We believe so. That's why we are Muslims. If we believe that there is, there is another path that is better, we would go and believe in that belief system. You know? So, Heidegger came very close to the truth that Muslims believe in. His ideas were, ser were certainly benefit us. Dwelling from his point of view is achieving... But, uh, 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 is achieved by maintaining what he calls the fourfold. The earth, the sky, the divinities, and the mortals, together in their inseparable oneness. Now, isn't that what we were talking about? Isn't that near what we were talking about? This is a man who used his mind, his affectivity, and he, he wandered through the Black Forest in Germany, thinking and thinking, Heidegger says, look at the, the beauty of what he uh, writes. And uh, uh, the, the, the philosophers used to call him about uh, his writing bad poetry. Look, look what he says. But on earth already means under the sky. But on earth already means under the sky. Both of these also mean remaining before the divinities and include a belonging to man being with one another by a primal oneness of the four, earth and sky, divinities and mortals belonging together in one. I'm not going to explain Heidegger's talk because I think that there are a lot of people who can do that better than me, but I'm going to just say one thing. You cannot be on earth without being under the sky, even if you are on the moon. You know, you are on the earth, you are, you are on the land of the moon, under the sky. You cannot, it, it is inescapable. Being on earth, in your natural belonging, is already being under the sky. You cannot shut off the sky. Yes. Okay? Well, we try to shut off the skies when we, when we you know, uh, neglect courtyards, we uh, live inside... Um, artificial buildings without looking at the sky, but you cannot, in the natural sense, uh, eliminate the sky. So being on earth is uh, being uh, uh, under the sky. And it's being before the divinities, because you cannot also shut off the divinities. You cannot shut off this um, superior being. It is there, even if you are not there. Even, even if you die, he will always be there, because he doesn't die. 
and then you cannot be alone, even if you uh, uh, live the solitary life. There will always be others around you, even by their negation. You know what I mean? Earth is the serving bearer. Look at how, uh, the way Heidegger puts it. Earth is the serving bearer, blossoming and fruiting, uh, fruiting, spreading out in uh, rock and water, rising up into plant and animal. When we say Earth, we are already thinking of the other three along with it. But we give no thought to the simple oneness of the four. Then he, he goes to the sky. The sky is the vaulting path of the sun, the course of the changing moon, the wandering glitter of the stars, the years, seasons, and the changes, the light and dusk of day, the gloom and glow of night, the clemency and inclemency of the weather, the drifting cloud and blue depth of the, of the ether. When we say sky, we are already thinking of the other three along with it, but we give no thought to the simple oneness of the four. The divinities are the beckoning messengers of the Godhead. We Muslims believe that Allah. Out of the holy sway of the Godhead, the God appears in his presence or withdraws into his concealment. When we speak of the divinities, we are already thinking of the other three along with it, but we give no thought to the simple oneness of the four. The mortals are the human beings. They are called mortals because they can die. To die is to be capable of death as death. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel something. He, Heidegger touches me, you know. Only man dies, and indeed continually, as long as he remains on earth, under the sky, before the divinities. When we speak of mortals, we are already thinking of the other three along with it. We, but we give no thought to the simple oneness of the four. The simple oneness of the four, we can call, we, we call the fourfold. Mortals are in the fourfold by dwelling. You see? This is dwelling. Dwelling is something multi-aspect, multi-layered. You engage with being, with existence. And through this true engagement, you read you start to read or see or view the, 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 the most noble uh, existence, the one that created you. I always say something, يعني, 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 who, who we, we are unable of cre creating anything. We make things out of things, but we don't create things out of nothing. Nobody creates anything out of nothing. He is the creator. But the basic character, I'll go back to Heidegger, but the basic character of dwelling is to spare, to preserve. Mortals dwell in the way they preserve the fourfold in its essential being. It's presenting, presenting, presenting itself. According to the preserving that dwells in the fourfold. Mortals dwell in, the, in, in that they save the earth, taking the word in the old sense still known by Lessing, the, 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 the thinker, and the, Lessing, the, I think, is a thinker, is a, a scholar. Saving does not only snatch something from a, danger, from a danger. To save really means to set something free into its own presence. To save the earth is more than to exploit it or even wear it out. Saving the earth does not master the earth and does not subjugate it which is merely one step from spoilation. Spoilation is corruption. What means, what Heidegger means by spoilation is what uh, uh, is translated in the English text of the Quran as corruption. You spoil something, corrupt something. Mortals dwell in that they await the divinities as divinities. In hope, they hold up to the divinities what is unhoped for. They wait for intimations of their coming and do not mistake the signs of their absence. They do not make their gods for themselves and they do not wor worship idols. In the very depth of misfortune, they wait for the wheel that has been withdrawn. 
Mortals dwell in that they innate their own nature, the being capable of death as death, into the use and practice of this capacity so that they may be a good death. To in initiate mortals into the nature of death in no way means to make, er, make death as empty nothing the goal, nor does it mean to darken dwelling by blindly staring towards the end. The serv in serving the earth, in receiving the sky, in awaiting the divinities, in initiating mortals, divin dwelling occurs as the fourfold, the fourfold preservation of the fourfold to spare and preserve means to take under our care, to look after the fourfold in its presencing. What we take under our care must be kept safe. In this extremely sincere and extremely poetic way that dominates his philosophizing, Heidegger speaks to us about the earth and the sky and the divine and the mortals. All this while he is questioning about and searching, searching for the meaning of dwelling. Heidegger takes us back to where we started, to nature, or in a more correct expression, to the science. Heidegger is talking well, this is the, the end of Heidegger's, uh, the quote from Heidegger. In this extremely sincere and extremely poetic way that dominated the philosophizing of Heidegger, the bad poet, Heidegger speaks to us uh, about the earth, about the sky, the divine, and the mortals. All this while he is questioning about and searching for the meaning of dwelling. Heidegger takes us back to where we started, to nature, or in a more correct expression, to the sign. In the Quran, you don't find the word tabi'ah. You find the signs. Ayatihi, wa min ayatihi, wa min ayatihi. Allah always says, wa min ayatihi. The signs connect us, connects us with the pulse and rhythm of the universe, making us live constantly in a presence and recollection of its structure and utmost purpose. It makes us truly alive so that all of our thought, thoughts, feelings, and actions come in harmony with the ultimate goodness and righteousness that is Allah's will. It makes us virtuous and beneficent. Well, beneficent, muhsin. Mohsin is, it has many meanings. I mean, Mohsin comes from hus, which is beauty. Mohsin comes from doing things in a proper manner, in an excellent manner. Uh, that is Allah's will. Uh, 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 it makes us uh, uh, virtuous and beneficent, worshipping Allah as if we see him. Uh, the definition of Ihsan uh, 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 we, we learn the definition of Ihsan from the Prophet, peace be upon him, in a hadith that m most Muslims know when uh, the angel Gabriel came to the Prophet in a form of a human being and he sat uh, next to him or in front of him and he told him, tell me what is Islam, what is Iman, what is Ihsan? So when he asked him what is Ihsan, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, and ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara to worship Allah as if, as if you see him, because it's impossible to see him in this life, as if you see him. This is the higher limit. This is the ihsan. Not all of us are muhsini, but we seek to be muhsini. To worship Allah as if you see him. You see him through the signs. You see him as when you always think about him, when you always Think about him with your mind and feel about him with your heart, effectively. And uh, uh, to worship God as if you see him. But if you cannot see him, he sees you. This is the lower limit. He sees you. You should, you should always consider that you are in, in, a, in continuous, uh, you are being continuously tested. Continuously tested and surveillance, and you have yeah. an eye on you. Yeah, yeah. It makes us affected as we are when we read the Holy Quran and imagine. So I'm now 
يعني we, we heard what Heidegger said and listen to these verses of the Quran and compare them to of course there is a there's complete difference but I want you to compare the, the, the verses of the Quran with what Heidegger felt and said والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يخشاها والسماء وما بناها by the sun and his glorious splendor by the moon as, it, as she follows him by the day as it shows up the sun's glory by the night as it conceals it by the firmament of its wonderful structure I think there is something there is a relation لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عادك العرجون القديم لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون and a sign, a sign for them is the night we withdraw the, the, there from the day and behold they are plunged in darkness and the sun runs his course for a period determined for him that is the decree of him, the exalted in might, the all-knowing, and the moon. God is always talking about the signs. He talks to us about the signs. The, the, the signs, the universal signs. In a, 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 a context that is religious, meaning that it points, it relates to Knowing the truth. So what does the science, the universal science have to do with it? Because they cannot, they show, they point to him. They point to, the, to, to Allah, to the divine. You know, yes. they point to this existence. Yes. That is the true existence. And of course we are a, a coexistence. We are a shadow. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yes. And in this position, Heidegger returns us to the sign. In his poetic way, which reminds us of the verses of the Holy Quran, that seizes with us a solemn yet familiar feeling. Very familiar, that takes us over completely. And we find no expression to show such feelings other than each other's. Actually, when I was reading Heidegger, and when I read the Quran, I, I feel each other's, you know? And tears, tears like the ones we shed in the presence of a sublime creation. Or even sometimes when we enter a beautiful and graceful building or an intimate ruin, a feeling that forces us to utter with an honest awareness that shakes our entirety. To Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. I know a young architect very close to me actually. When she sees a, a, a beautiful building, she goes into tears. That is a proof of the importance of architecture. Architecture is important because it is necessary. You cannot live without it. But you should not practice it in excess. The importance of architecture should not lead you to do excessive, excessive architecture. There is a balance. A balance. It's all yes. about balance. Yes. Okay? Yes. We truly dwell when we get surrounded by authentic and noble meanings. When we find the true meaning of our existence. When we remember. When we remember. Because we know we have, it's innately and it's coined into us. Truth is coined into the human being. When we find the true meaning of our existence, when we remember the ultimate truth, we remember the truth as a lived experience, manifested in the material. We cannot live in, you know, ideas or information, one, zero, zero, one, things. Even a computer has to manifest the one, zero, zero, one on a screen or on a, you know, it's all about manifestation. We are, we live in a, you know, uh, I think the, the, the Sting had a song 
that says our spirits in a material world. Do you remember that song? I'm an old man, I'm our spirits in a material world. That's it. Yes. You know? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, we truly dwell in places that remind us of Allah. That's, that's it. Whether we know it or not. Whether we know it or not. This is very important. We, all wisdom is from Allah. But there are wise men who are not Muslims. Yes. And this is from God's mercy. Yes. You know, he doesn't feed his worshippers. He feeds everybody. He doesn't shelter his worshippers only. He shelters everybody. You know? Yes. Um, places that con connect us to the sun. So, when we when architecture fulfills its uh, uh, purpose as a shelter, as a physical shelter, you know, and when architecture fulfills its uh, purpose as a climatic mean, when architecture ful fulfills its purpose as uh, an aesthetic, and, and even the aesthetic dimension of architecture is all is derived from uh, relating it to the sound. It should point to the truth by, through, being a sign amplifier. This is a very nice word. It amplifies the signs. It brings in the signs into the inside. So you don't ha you don't only uh, experience the signs. On the outside, you experience the signs all the way, through the way, second. Yes. So that brings us to the, uh, the sport, <laughs> the end of the sport. I wanted to reflect on that and say something. When you were reading the verses, of it was very beautiful, it was very deep, and it's a lot to digest. It needs some time to come back to it and repeat this excerpt of this video. But one of the things you were mentioning is... Um, uh, the chapter of uh, Ashams, and of course we, we usually choose the translation that is closest to the meaning, however I notice that the translation is translating the Shams as a he and the moon as a she, whereas in Arabic... Yes, I don't realize that, um, I, I, my, my classic English is zero. No, 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 it's okay, but uh, in, 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 uh, in Arabic, the Shams is a, the, the sun is a she. And, the, she, and yeah. the moon is a he, and it's as if you were talking about balance. That the sun, despite its power, it is a she. And the moon, despite it being so subtle and comes in the night and gets its luminance from the sun, is a he. And well, so now, Kaman, I believe that yani, the, of, I believe in the power of femininity. You know, you know. Yes. Feminine is, is what you return to. And they say that is why the, the, the Prophet, despite being... Yes. He didn't say, he didn't say, you dwell in a house and you dwell with your spouse. Yes, yes, that the man, that, that the, it's, it's more of a feminine, that the, the Sakina is a feminine power. Yes, it's very true that the, the, the dwelling and the calmness is a feminine power. And that's why some say that the, the, the Prophet, despite being a male, he was a specimen for both males and females because he had the perfect balance of the male power and the female, feminine power, as you were mentioning. Oh, I didn't get that. That the Prophet, وسلم, he was the, the <laughs> ultimate specimen for both men and women because he had both energies in balance. Of course. Of course. But when you were saying, you were talking about these verses, I noticed if we continue them, if we continue them, yeah, the verses say, by the sun and its brightness, and the moon as it follows it, and the day as it unveils it, and the night as it conceals it, and by the heaven and the one who built it, and the earth and the one who spread it, and by the soul and the one who fashioned it, then with the knowledge of right and wrong inspired it, successful indeed is the one who purifies their soul. They say in the Quran there is the widest oath and the longest oath. The widest oath, I swear by what you see, what you do not see. The widest oath. This is the longest oath in the Quran. And they say the ultimate 
end of this oath is to purify oneself. And you were mentioning that looking at these signs and, as, and at these miracles would lead to a purpose and meaning of life to purify oneself and to find the truth. And, and there's something very important and, and, and very uh, uh, good to say. And, and there's something very important and, and, and very uh, uh, and good to say that living in such a way is not a, 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 a way of living that uh, neglects this life on earth, the worldly life. Actually, for a wise man, uh, living for the, for, in, in this way, for that purpose, is the most enjoyable. Uh, the, 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 I don't know who said that, but one of the prominent and good Sufis, good, good proper Sufis, good proper Muslims, said, I am in, um, I am in um, Naim, uh, in joy, a blessing. Enjoy, in enjoy, you know, an inner feeling. Joy is a feel in a feeling of joy. I am in, in a kind of joy that if the kings knew about it, they would have come and fought for to 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 take that to, to take it to feel it from me with uh, with sword. It it's it's wisdom. Uh, a wise man knows the, the 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 beauty of wisdom. Wisdom is beautiful. Uh, God says, "Woman, uti al hikma tafaqad uti al khayran kafir." Yes, whoever has been given mm. wisdom has been given a great and, good. And I think that uh, uh, wise non-Muslim, we are talking about Islam. We're talking from an Islamic domain, Islamic perspective. But non-Muslim wise men, non-Muslim wise men, who have the seed of Islam in what they do. Uh, we should learn from them. Al hikma dalat al mu'min. Wisdom uh, is, uh, is should be sought by uh, um, uh, um, a believer. He can get it from anywhere he finds it. We are we, we are open to anything good, anything righteous, anything wise, anything balanced. It's not about an ideology or a, you know. It's not about that. It's about, and, oh, and also it's not about uh, 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 neglecting and stepping uh, uh, over our uh, limits and laws and do's and don'ts. Because the do's and don'ts, it keeps you in the domain of wisdom. Do's and don'ts are not meant um, uh, يعني, to make you feel bad or, or, or make you feel angry. Or, they are, the, the limits are made to keep you in the wise domain, to keep you in the rightest domain, to keep you in the beautiful domain. Yes. In the in the ihsan. In the ihsan or the taqwa. Or the taqwa. And we're going to talk about that. Ihsan you say one taqwa. of the meanings of ihsan, it's one it's a word you cannot translate into English because it's excellence in oneself in the species around him, in the environment, and with one's creator, ultimately. It, it relates, it relates uh, good deeds, righteous doing, proper doing, excellence, and beauty. It's, yeah. it's something that is, it's a all-rounded meaning. And actually, uh, not all Arabic speakers understand the meaning of Ihsan. The meaning of Ihsan yes. is... Very true. And I think uh, that... Uh, the companions of the Prophet. This is why we need heritage. We need to understand the way they understood. We should, it's not about dressing the way they, they dressed and building the way they built. It's all about being humanly as they were and doing anything today. And this is, I'm going to talk to, uh, about that when we talk about renewal and creativity. What is creativity for versus novelty? Because there is a different meaning, you know? Cre and being creative and being, and re being new is something, and being novel is something different from my point of view at least. You know, my point of view, I'm responsible for what I'm saying. It could be wrong, but this is what I believe. Yes. You know what I mean? Thank you.
Thank you. We will, we will, okay. we will continue to the second part of episode two shortly. Okay. Stay tuned, everyone. Take okay. a break. I'll finish my fifth coffee. And <laughs> <laughs> We are both coffee lovers. This yeah, is yeah. I'm, I'm a coffee addict. Coffee, coffee is the second connection. And I, I drink uh, two kinds of coffee. I drink instant coffee and, and Turkish coffee together. I take a sip of this and a sip of that. Bring in it's, it's thick. To bring in tradition and modernity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not modernity, being contemporary. Being contemporary. Or modernity, because instant coffee is it's bad. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. See you soon. Thank you. So, so welcome everyone to part two of episode two. Engineer Tara, you spoke a lot about the court and its relationship to architecture and built environment and heritage and meaning. Yes. And this, this was my final uh, example. The final example in that talk. Yeah, I have so many examples. Um, uh, I talked about the courtyard, I talked about, we talked about dwelling, and we talked about the signs, and how uh, 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 a good building is an amplifier of the signs, and dwelling happens when you remember what the signs point to. And the courtyard, and the, the most important uh, function of the courtyard is the immaterial function. It has, of course, it has so many functions that all architects know, and all architects love the quarter. But I'm, I was talking specifically about this immaterial uh, function, uh, which is that it brings the sky into uh, the building. Now, in this uh, second part of our second episode, I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to go into the theme that I didn't start with. I, 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 we said that we are going to start with the examples, so we can, show, we can see the applications of the importance of heritage. Uh, so uh, I'm going to, to ask a question. Why heritage? The relationship of heritage and architecture. What is the relationship of heritage to architecture? The examples made that clear, quite clear. I think most of the people who uh, uh, had followed us, most of the audience have seen the relationship, uh, the tight relationship between heritage and uh, architecture, between heritage and any human uh, action, any human doing. Uh, this is the theoretical, the start of the theoretical part. And I hope that uh, people will bear with me the, the intensity of, of what I have wrote. Well, the few previous examples which we discussed in the two preceding, uh, in the, in the preceding uh, parts has demonstrated to us how uh, of a continuous unchanging thread linking between our present and past architecture can have its valuable guiding effect. This continuous thread has to do with our worldview. So the most important thing is, that, is how uh, uh, heritage guides our worldview. It maintains our worldview uh, and way of life and identity. All architects have, have been thinking and talking about identity. <clears throat> this continuous thread is still present despite the fact that we must admit that our current way of life is in many ways diff strongly contradicts the way illustrated in the examples we discussed. That is with our real identity, which is a genuine and original mode. Some people might think of the examples as dreams, but actually they are not. We, it's heritage talking to us of how we should return, uh, at least in our intentions, towards such a worldview and such a uh, way of life, which is genuine and origi an original mode now lost in an honest reflection of our beliefs and orientations. It is exactly here where the inevitable role of heritage comes to renew the spirit of the identity deformed by forgetfulness. <clears throat> so renewal 
We renew the spirit. What comes forward is the spirit. We are not after mimicking and parroting the corpse, the material corpse of ancient and past buildings, ancient and past actions. We are after what is metaphorically called the spirit, which is the essence of the, ide of, of the identity deformed by forgetfulness, loss and confusion. It is the authentic interaction with heritage that shows in front of societies that it reminds them, that is, it reminds them of the essence of their existence and true ultimate purpose. Of course, if somebody doesn't have an ultimate purpose, that's his problem. It's not ours. It is in this moment that the function of heritage or the role of heritage manifests, helping us greatly to realize its reality, its essence, and thus its definition. At this moment then, let us ask the most important yet deliberately postponed question. What is the reality of heritage? Here we must take a pause to affirm that our answer to this question will not be our own way. That is, the way which accords... Uh, uh, here we must take a pause to affirm that our answer to this question will be our own way. That is, the way which accords to our identity. That is, which stems from who we are. And here we are faced with the fact that we are Muslims. Muslim perspective. Islamic perspective. We are Muslims. I claim that heritage is simply the carrying vessel, holding the culture and way of life and worldview of a certain society of people. The heart which pumps blood into its veins. It is the memory the memory that embraces the numerous strata of features that forms its identity. And in turn, as we mentioned before, it is this identity that determines the modality and purpose of its being and existence. Heritage, therefore, which is mostly intended in its positive sense. When we speak about heritage, we speak about good heritage, the heritage that we should uh, be inspired uh, so heritage, uh, uh, when we, with, with it mostly intended in positive sense, we may include what is righteous and morally correct. Heritage might include what is righteous and morally correct, and also what is erroneous, uh, uh, aimless, and misguided. Well, Professor Taha Abdurrahman, the prominent Moroccan thinker and philosopher, says, and I quote, we are with heritage as we are in the world. We have no choice towards it and no possibility of separation from it. This is very simple and very basic and very important and very obvious. But then, as, as we learned from all the philosophical culture, it is the obvious, it is proving the, the obvious is the challenge of thinking. Socrates, Plato, and were, they were talking about the obvious. But the problem with the human being is that he forgets. We have no choice towards it, no possibility of separation from it. End of quote. The, po the popular Egyptian wisdom says, who, he who has no past has no future. It's a, it's a common slang uh, proverb. Any fair-minded person would immediately realize the distortion and deformation that modernity has caused to our lives due to its intentional and deliberate rejection of heritage and its disconnection and contempt of traditions. Except people who enjoy modernity. Some people enjoy, they, 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 they enjoy modernity. They love it that way. That's the way I like it. Such catastrophes are clear uh, clear evidence of those who deny the necessity of readopting heritage and desire to reproduce the wheel of Western, moder Western modernity with all its mistakes and disasters. Islam's perception of existence totally accept her accepts heritage, depends and is based on it. 
the important and pivotal reason from this point of view of us, from the point of view of us Muslims, is that the epistemic and effective framework, which indirectly affects, affects uh, the technical aspects, is based on the mind, consciousness, soul, and most importantly, revelation. What is valued concerning knowledge is not its quantity, but rather the quality of meanings, true and authentic. That is, aimed, the, the meanings aimed towards truth and striking it, that leads to good deeds and actions, where good architecture is a sign of such good deeds and actions. Architecture is the face of civilization. As the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, I have left you two matters. As long as you hold to them, you will not go the wrong way, or you will not err. They are the book of Allah, and the Sunnah of his Prophet. تركت فيكم أمرين لن تضلوا إما تمسكتم بهما كتاب الله وسنة نبي. Then the Quran and the Sunnah and the actions of the Prophet's companions and followers are all each in its status, the legal, moral, cultural, and effective heritage of Muslims that they cannot depart from. The above prophetic hadith indicates and even recommend looking through the past and hence adopting heritage that carries its, it as a memory. It is this memory we call heritage that is the source and spring of the roots or fundamentals that in turn strike the heart of truth, which is the measure and gauge, mizan, measure and gauge of all deeds and actions. So truth is the measure and gauge of all deeds and actions. If you do things in the proper truthful way, you are right. If you do things in an improper and not truthful way, you are wrong. This is the measure. It is not about doing according to this way or that way. Our way is the way of truth, as we are going to see. And uh, Allah, the, think of the words of Allah, the Almighty. أَلَمْ تَرَى كَيْفَ ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً كَشَجَرَةٌ طَيِّبَةً أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتْ وَفَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ تُؤْتِئُ كُلَهَا كُلَّ حِينٍ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهَا وَيَضْرُبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ ومثل كلمة خبيثة كشجرة خبيثة اشتثت من فوق الأرض ما لها من قرار يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء. Seest though not how Allah set forth a parable. A goodly word is like a goodly tree whose root is firmly fixed and its branches reaches to the heavens of its Lord. So Allah sets forth parables for men in order, in order that they may receive admonition. It brings forth its fruit at all times by the leave of its law. So Allah sets forth parables for men in order that they may receive admonition. And the parable of an evil word is that of an evil tree. It is torn up from its root, from the surface of earth. It has no stability. So we are God speaks about truth, uh, uh, roots, I'm sorry, roots. Look how Allah describes the goodly word with its firm root. It is authentic, truthful, and strongly fixed in root of truth, of the truth. Can I, uh, before we move on to the next session, I wanted to ask you regarding that. We say if we do something a deed, in this case that we're talking about this building in the built environment, if, it's, if it doesn't follow the truth, then it is not true or it will not bring about prosperity. How do you see that coupled with the idea of renewal, that's deep? Well, I'm, not, I'm going to come to that. I have, I, I have a, a, a okay. part talking about renewal, that's deep, okay. and its relationship or its, 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 its I, 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 because you have renewal and you have novelty. New, the new and the novel. We are going to come to that. Okay. But now we are talking about the foundations, the roots. Yes, yes. And 
rooted in what? Rooted in truth. Yes. You know? Uh, isn't the entire the entity that could carry such roots and origins heritage? Also, in all that we mean by the word heritage, are the noble meanings which lead to good actions in this life? It is for this reason that Allah mentions the branches, results. The branches are the results of such a tree. They are the fruit of such a tree. Uh, they are in the sky, a metaphor of distinction and honor. Our, our conversation about heritage lead us, leads us to talk about fundamentals. Foundations, fundamentals, basics. And then, as we went along talking about fundamentals, with all the fresh meanings, and I insist on, the, I, I, I stress the word fresh meanings of this word, uh, the meanings that this word carries, because all meanings should be fresh. Stagnant meanings are just terms, terminology. They mean something. In, in a, a conceptual uh, idea that doesn't have to be wrong. But when you free the meaning from its, uh, 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 ter, ter, from being a term, and you go etymologically to the, to the root of this term and understanding as it is, then you start to understand uh, the, the, the word and you uh, start to understand the talk and the, and the, and the ideas. Um, so we, we want to look at the word foundation in a fresh way. Um, uh, fun, uh, sorry, fundamentals in a fresh way. So we say uh, uh, we want to talk about fundamentals with all its fresh meanings, with all the fresh meanings this word carries. We have thus chosen. Uh, we have done, we have we have just uh, thus chosen and based our thinking on the fundamentals that we recognize and which, li which like to return to, and we like to return to. So we want to return to certain fundamentals, certain roots. We have determined our method of thinking and discourse, which is to adhere to fundamentals that we believe to be true. Thus, we have chosen to be fundamentalists. This is the true meaning of being a fundamentalist. Yes, fundamentalists, but away from the pretentious ideological meaning of the term. We will consign to the true, innocent, and pure meaning we have fleshed out of this otherwise notorious word. But again, why do we care about the roots and fundamentals? Usul. Uh, Allah is saying, Asluha thabit. Usul. And talk about. What is the meaning of this word in Arabic uh, dictionaries? This is very important. The meaning of the word fundamentals or usul is that whose ruling is proven by itself and is not based on anything else. مَا يَثْبُتُ حُكْمُهُ بِنَفْسِهِ وَلَمْ يُبْنَ عَلَى غَيْرِهِ I'm going to uh, uh, say that again. That, fundamentals, usul, the roots of a tree, are that whose ruling is proven by itself. It is independent. An axiom. An axiom. And is not based on anything else. Or, ma yambani alay, and ma yambani alay ghayr. What could be built upon? It is something that you can build upon. You can build upon. It is not out there in the air, you know. It is not some kind of, a, of an abstract idea that came to you out of the blue that could be right or could be wrong, you know. And he, uh, and Newton uh, talked about, uh, he discovered uh, gravity and then uh, Einstein came with a different idea and, you know, uh, this at the time was supposed to be the ultimate truth and the scientific truth, you know? Yes. yes. Karim Laham, in, in his book, uh, he was, it's a book about Muhammad Shahroor, it's called Cargo Cult, a Meditation on the Underlying Conceptual Framework. He says, it is our contention 
that this thing, that every thinker and writer is an inheritor of a chain of ideas or an intellectual system that he he necessarily necessarily manifests it in his writings, consciously or unconsciously. All writers are like that. What we are saying is that we are rooted in something. There is no such thing, in other words, as an orphan idea. Or an idea without a conceptual genealogy. This means that the nobility, the nobility or soundness of any idea is not only dependent on the pedigree of its genealogy or silsila, chain. Okay? Professor Ta Abdurrahman in his book, Dialogues for the Future, Hurratman Agla Mustaqbal, and this is my modest uh, translation, he says, and I quote, we do not think that the interest of herit in heritage is an interest in a useless past. Look at Tab Rahman always puts things beautifully. Lest we fear for ourselves becoming absorbed in it to the extent that it prevents us from taking care of the present. This has to do with renewal that you, you wanted us to talk about, you know? Yes. If we assume that someone abandons interest in his original heritage, okay, then this does not necessarily mean that he becomes cut from all heritage. It's impossible. It's impossible. Rather, on the contrary, he will turn to pay attention to the heritage of others. Due to, the, to his lack of self-reliance, for example, he who calls in the name of modernity to stop returning to heritage Okay, and to uh, that's yani, absolutely stop returning modernity wants us to cut ourselves from heritage and start all over again. And to adopt modern knowledge as presented by the West, he calls he call his call is nothing more than replacing the preoccupation with the original heritage with the preoccupation with the foreign heritage. See the catch? Okay, this is because modern knowledge is known finds its support in Western, as is known, is, finds its support in Western heritage and remains, remains a bear of its, of its characteristics and effects, despite why, what may be attributed to it of objectivity, scientism, rationalism, because these measures themselves are nothing but values produced by the foreign heritage and have no comprehensiveness or universality except that of this heritage. Based on all that, the human mind alone, this is very important, with the senses that serves it, builds on other bases. It needs a foundation. Therefore, it needs a usul. Therefore, the mind is not fit to be a root or a foundation. And that is exactly where the modernists went wrong. Allah says, وَإِن تُطَعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّوا عن سبيل الله وإن يتبعون إلا الظن وإنهم إلا يخلصون. This is a very important verse. Were thou to follow, if you are going to follow the common run of those on earth, and the the the, the literal English translation is to follow most people on earth, they will lead you. They will lead thee. They will lead you away from the way of Allah. Okay? Why? 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 I ask. They follow nothing but conjuncture. They do nothing but lie. That means, when I translate the literal Arabic uh, verse, they follow their dhan. How do you say dhan in English, Faris? Dhan, their... Um, they are not sure, something that is not sure. You're not doubt sure. Is, um, a doubt. Uh, you, they follow their doubts, okay? Positive doubts. وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَخْرُصُونَ Al-Khars is... Um, uh, 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 يعني, uh, it's something by chance. It is not based on something profound. 
إيه هم إلا يخرصون. He hit their hit and see what is going to happen and what is what is what they are going to يعني get out of it by chance by by a kind of sort of a certain wit. Random, random trial without any predecessing underpinning. Yeah, but the divine revelation in which we believe as Muslims is what the definition of origin applies linguistically. Accordingly, the root and foundation al asl in Islam is the divine revelation in the form of the Quran, Allah's word, and the Sunnah of the Prophet. We, when we say usul din. All Muslims know Usul Din, the, 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 the basics of uh, the religion. Yes. The, the roots of the religion, the basics of the religion. Yes. Allah's words and the sunnah of his prophet, peace be upon him, alayhi salatu was salam. Okay, so the holy book, which is a glimpse of Allah's knowledge, introduces man to the reason and purpose of his existence. That's the key, uh, uh, one of the key uh, purposes of the Quran. I have only created jinns and men that they may serve me. And the, uh, the, 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 the concept and the idea of worship, al-ibadah, in Islam is a very comprehensive understanding. Yes. And you do not worship God because he is strong and you are weak and you worship God because truth, things as they are, is that you should worship him. If you have created, sometimes I say that يعني, between brackets, if, if, I have, if I was, if I had created myself, I would have worshipped myself. But I did not create myself. Everything tells me that. I don't decide that, 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 that my, the moment in which I die, I don't decide, I don't decide the, 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 how I get sick or ill or have a disease. I don't decide fate. We are limited. And there is an unlimited power that we deal with in our everyday life, in this material world. This is ibadah. You should worship God or you should uh, address God because he is the one who has the right to be addressed. He is the true being. This is important. And this, when you are building with all these th theories, I, I, I don't like to say theories, with all this wisdom in your heart and your mind, and you are crafting a building because the building is not a concept and it's a craft. Building is a craft. You know? Yes. You are, you are doing... We, we do not think... Uh, I think Heidegger said that when we are... When the, the, the carpenter is hitting the nail, he's not thinking in theories. He does not address the, the hammer as an idea. He is crafting his work. When the hammer breaks, the carpenter's consciousness realizes and understands the hammer as an idea because now he wants to intervene and fix it. But we are crafting a building. So uh, an architect, the best architect in the world, the star architect of all star architects, you know, with, without this wisdom, if he, all he has to do is to catch uh, uh, people's interests, you know, and uh, uh, turn eyes and become an, a flat, makes a building which is a flashy eye turner, you know. He's doing nothing. He's doing something that is going to crumble into, because it's corrupt, it's going to crumple, crumble into nothingness, you know. It will not stand the test. It will not stand the test of not not just uh, the, the 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 measure of God, but the test of time. It will be neglected. You know. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Allah says in the Quran, "Wa min dabbatin 
في الأرض ولا طير يطير بجناحيه إلا أمم أمثالكم ما فرطنا في الكتاب من شيء ثم إلى ربهم يحشرون There is not an animal that lives on earth nor a being that flies on its, on its wings but forms, but forms part of communities like you This is the important bit Nothing have we omitted from the book We have not neglected anything in this book We have not forgotten anything in this book And they all shall be gathered to the Lord in the end. Another verse, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ فَاحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَتَّبِعَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ عَمَّا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ لَكُلٍ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْهَاجًا وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أمة واحدة ولكن ليبلوكم فيما أتاكم فاستبقوا الخيرات إلى الله مرجعكم جميعا فننبئكم بما كنتم فيه تختلفون This is a beautiful verse We have revealed to you, O Prophet this book with the truth as a confirmation of previous scriptures and a supreme authority on them Now this is why we are Muslims, because we believe in all the other books. But we believe that this book confirms, we believe that this book confirms the previous scriptures, but it's supreme authority on them. It has supreme authority on them from our point of view, from our um, uh, uh, position. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed. See? So judge between them by what Allah has revealed. And do not follow their desires over the truth that has come to you. To each of you, you have originated a code of law and a way of life. If Allah has dwelled, he would have made you one community. We are being tested. We have to be different and there has to be differences and, you know, a kind of Um, challenges, intellectual challenges, uh, spiritual challenges, differences between people, so it can be a test. He would have made you one community, but he wills to test you with what he has given each of you. So compete with one another in good doing, in doing good. To Allah, you will, return, you will all return. Again, a, 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 an understanding of return. Then he will inform you of the truth regarding your differences. These verses tell us that the Holy Quran for Muslims confirms the truth that came before it. For truth couldn't be but one. It's another obvious uh, um, uh, idea. You cannot have two truths. It, it's a contradiction to have two different truths. Truth is one. Is things as they are, not th things as this way and things that way. La things as they are. We do not claim that we have or hold the ultimate truth. The Quran is the ultimate truth. Between us and between the Quran is our understanding. But then it is Quran and Arabian غير ذي عوجن. It is clear. It is not. Um, uh, it is not. Um, uh, liquid it is not you know uh, it, it is clear and it is it's not it's not it's not fluid it's not fluid it's not fluid you know for truth couldn't couldn't be but one but it dominates previous laws of the people of the book therefore it is for muslims the fundamental foundation to build upon and measure against Note that the Quran clearly calls the following, uh, calls for following the Sunnah. The Sunnah, if you are, if you believe in the Quran, you have to believe in the Sunnah because the Quran tells you believe in the Sunnah. Be a Sunni, follow the path of the Prophet. Yes. You know, you can't you can't separate them. It is it's a trick of Satan to separate. Yes. Huh? As you are, as you are just passing, explain what is the sunnah? What is the meaning of the word sunnah? Just the, the application of truth. 
قرآنا كان خلقه القرآن his morality his, his doing his, his actions his, his, the way his, he, he, he manifests his being into the material of the earth into the material of the worldly life because we are we, what, what is action it is manifesting you know the immaterial into the material and the tangible okay a, a very important point matter without immaterial the immaterial is a corpse a dead corpse you know it 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 it, it rots it smells it is that it, is that it loses. It loses its anemic. You call it anemity or an 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 Yes. Yeah. Anemity. It is not an. Uh, yeah. You know. But and the spirit without matter that is manifested, it is uh, voodoo. Huh? Nothing. 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 It, we we are. Nobody flies in the air. We are mani we manifest our deeds in. وقول أعماله فسير الله عملكم ورسوله المؤمنون. Do uh, act, and Allah will see your action, His prophets, His prophet, and the believers. We're going to come yes. to this. It's all it's all about manifesting and concrete concretizing. Our beliefs and morals into matter. Okay, we come to a, 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 the next point: heritage and the concept of Islamic architecture. We'll see now how this, all these uh, concepts and uh, 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 theories, uh, materialize themselves into uh, Islamic uh, architecture or the architecture that we claim to be guided by Islam, which is an ethical and moral system uh, and, the, and a system of wisdom that guides man towards his purpose. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Amara, the, the Muslim thinker, says, in the past, the word Islamic did not commence the titles of the writing of the first Muslims. There was nothing as such as Islamic. If you go into uh, old scholars, they don't say al amar al -Islami, Islamic architecture, Islamic this, Islamic that. This is because it was an axiom emanating from the belief system of Islam and its cognitive principles. But when Islam became a stranger log in its own land, unfortunately, there became a need for such emphasis which does not represent merely a slogan, but rather a value that means commitment to the regulations of, no, of knowledge in Islam. Okay? As for knowledge, it is understanding something with thought and contemplation. And it is a diligent attempt to reach the truth of the universe and revelation without being certain that it is the complete truth. Even Muslims should not think that they, you know, uh, have the complete truth. My understanding is not the complete, under the book is the complete truth. My understanding is my understanding. Okay? Yes. It is rooted in truth. Yeah? Yes. Let us, let us complete what Amara says. It is understanding something with thought and contemplation and it's a diligent attempt to reach the truth of the universe and revelation without being certain that it is the complete truth. And therefore, it is relative and not as complete as Allah's knowledge. The book is Allah's knowledge. It is always incomplete and deficient due to man's short-sightedness and limited perception and abilities. Accordingly, the Islamicity of knowledge, this was a project that uh, Ismail Rajil Farooqi, Muhammad Amara, they worked on Islamicity of knowledge. 
basing uh, knowledge into its, its Islamic roots, into the Quran. It's, it's an excellent project. And I, I think what I, I am trying to follow these people in my, in my modest uh, work is an extended and ambitious project that seeks to produce human knowledge based on the correct understanding of Islam, its manifold truths of faith and the universal laws of God, recognizing the relativity of human knowledge as opposed to absoluteness of Allah's knowledge. Well, end of quote. Proper contemplation on heritage and its re relevance promises an answer to the persi persistent question that poses itself asking whether there are influences or even direct Islamic teachings regarding building. Islamic architecture. What is the relationship? This question is really the essence of the question of the relationship between Islam and architecture. I like always to think of Islamic architecture as a relationship between Islam and architecture. Islam, a system, a moral system, a belief system, and architecture, a human, uh, an action system, a, a human action, a, so, a, a mode of human action. Okay? Islam is the, is the religion and architecture is the human action, which is the basic and fundamental question of Islamic architecture. This is what the scholars of Islamic architecture should be talking about. Okay? Oleg Grabar, I think he, he thought about in his uh, the formation of Islamic art, he, he gave that a thought and, and he wrote a, 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 an interesting introduction. And I, 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 from what I can remember, because I have a, a very bad memory, he, he asked the question and he posed the question. He wanted to understand what the, the Muslims who produced this architecture, the way the, the, he wanted to go into their minds. Okay? We can go into their minds because we are Muslims. And Taha Abdurrahman talks about praxis, practicing, as we are going to, to discuss later. You cannot understand Islam by being an alien contemplator. Because the majority or the, the, the most of Islam is something of the heart and mind that you have to be inside the threshold of Islam, the gateway of Islam, to uh, experience. You cannot experience ex Islam just by your mind. Okay? You have to... إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ A human being is not just a mind. This is a reduction. Okay? This is a reduction. Orientalists have reduced, not all of them, but most of them, have reduced Islam. They looked at Islam from a narrow perspective. Apparently, the answer to this question has not and will not be a single answer. The question of Islamic architecture. This is obvious. The reason for that is that the expected answer to this classic question will differ from one person to another according to his orientation and relationship to each of the two components of the question. Another obvious uh, note. That is according to his position, understanding and acceptance of Islam on the one hand and then his position, understanding and relationship to architecture on the other. So which answer do we accept and adopt? The answer of those who look at the issue and judge it from outside the domain of Islam like Orientalists and their faithful disciples, with all the Western and modernist biases, for example. Uh, Dr. Ismail Rajil Farooqi, Allah Arhamu, uh, confirms that those tend to measure Islamic art. This is very, this is very important in understanding Islamic art and uh, uh, studying Islamic, uh, the, uh, studying the history of the history of Islamic art, because there is a history to the history of Islamic art. Uh, 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 
uh, Ismail Raji Farooqi confirms that those who tend to measure Islamic art with the standards of Western art, a different balance, you know, you, you, you measure, you, you, you balance, you, you measure uh, the, 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 the distance between uh, Egypt and London, between Cairo and London, with, with, the, with, the, with the kilogram. How come? It's an impossibility. It's a distance. It's something completely different. Uh, another mode of being. Another understanding. Uh, and that is a huge fallacy. Could we accept the judgment of a superficial Muslim uh, who is concerned with Islamic architecture from a stylistic perspective? There are Muslims who are Orientalists. There are Muslims who do not practice Islam. Let us be uh, true. We, we, we live amongst them and they live amongst us. Or do we try to adopt the ishtihad of a normal practicing Muslim, or better, the opinion of a practicing Muslim who is specialized in both Islamic knowledge and architectural theory together? فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ You people can ask those who have knowledge if you do not know. أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ who people who are continuously thinking and remembering, recalling, you know, the people, the, the, people, the people of remembrance, those who are in constant remembrance. The, con in, the people of content, con the continuous, of yeah, the people, I like to call it the people of continuous engagement. Uh, okay? Yes. Who are the people of remembrance here? The extremely, the exemplary person, uh, this exemplary person, the scholar, cannot acquire his capabilities and qualifications except by going through his heritage and delving deeply into it. <clears throat> uh, Professor Taha Abdurrahman stresses the importance of praxis. Religious practice on, or th on thinking and divides human minds into three types. He divides the human mind into the abstract mind, al mujarrad the supported mind, al musaddad it is supported with the, based on the revelation, based on the text, the sacred text, based on the knowledge that we believe are foundational knowledge, usul, as we said, that can be built upon, and the guided mind, al aql al where the three types vary accordingly to belief and religious practice. So, the guided mind is a practicing mind. In Islam, the, the, the companions of, of the prophets did not learn the Qur'an uh, by memorizing it or by contemplating it uh, 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 philosophically. They used to learn three or five verses and applying them into day-to-day -day action. Because what is the point of wisdom if it is not applied in life? Okay? Islamic architecture is not some architectural, uh, is not uh, uh, about architectural elements of vocabulary such as mashrabeas, again, arches and domes scattered here and there. But rather, it is the product of a truly Muslim mind and a truly Muslim conscious, conscious that deals with effectivity, reflecting an authentic Islamic worldview, way of life and aesthetic sense and taste. Otherwise, everyone who claims the Islamicity of his architecture will be negligent, even if he hits some positive side. Our conclusion would be that understanding the relationship between architecture and Islam requires a deep understanding of both. That is including all possible aspects of such an understanding, intellectually, effectively, etc. The exposure to the enormous effect of the Holy Quran while reciting it, listening to it, and contemplating it, and absorbing hadith related both directly and indirectly to building and urbanism can never be understood. A lot of supposedly Muslim scholars 
maybe they are scholars in, who understand um, a lot of Islam, a lot about Islam, but they do not understand architecture. Yani, I'll give you an example. I read, uh, uh, one of the important books, uh, the only books that uh, I know a couple of them, who um, uh, uh, um, um, collects hadith and uh, sayings of the Prophet and uh, about architecture and buildings. He said, I can't remember his name, in, in, in one of the books, he said the following. Uh, uh, there is no, uh, um, um, uh, it, it is not hated to, be, to, go, to, to make high-rise buildings. Okay? When necessary, in the case, in such cases as when the land price is high. Okay? This is a complete uh, mistake. Because the land prices go high when you, when you can build high-rise buildings on them. If you have a building permit with 20 stories on a thousand uh, uh, meter land and a thousand meter land with a per permit for one story or a couple of stories, the one with the 20, it, it, it is economically, it is commercially, I mean, uh, more expensive. This is why the land in New York or in downtown Cairo, or in, it's very expensive. You know? It is not the other way around. That these kind of, suppose, scholars should be re-questioned. Their, their conclusions should be re-questioned by people who understand uh, architecture. It is not, it should not be left to Muslim scholars who knows nothing about architecture. Architecture in its true sense, building in its true sense, in its multi-layered, deep, you know, uh, uh, meaning. And the other way around, thinking of architecture, which uh, affects the, 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 the way of life of people and should be governed by a moral system, by, in Islam, by Islam. You know what? It should not be left to architects. They should build the thinking upon the fundamentals and the uh, roots of understanding it both ways. It is a, it is a, a, a dual, a dual, um, uh, um, 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 uh, yani, um, how do you say uh, it's a dual I, I don't want to say discipline but I, I, I want to say it's a dual um, it's a, activity it's a simultaneous the, multiple I, yeah, 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 that cannot be separated they are not mutually exclusive exactly thank you um, we have mentioned that heritage is the memory of a society of people or folk and the vessel that carries the details of their material, moral, emotional, and spiritual lives. We must then place a hundred lines and stress underneath the word memory and remembrance, recalling the words of Allah, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجَنَّةَ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لَا يَعْبُدُونَ And go on rewinding. It is, it is good for those who believe to be reminded. The whole matter is about what was present and was lost. Okay? Yes. The scourge of man is forgetfulness. And verily, very, I don't know, very lie, verily, we made a covenant of old with Adam, but he forgot, and we found no consistency in him. Therefore, our hope and goal are in revival and renewal. And our means for doing so are faith with our hearts and thinking with our minds, being guided by the sacred text and being guided 
by our heritage, continuously exploring it in order to straighten our conscious, uh, conscious, uh, our conscience to find the right way to live our lives. Ehdina Sirat al Mustaqeen, guide us to the straight path. Our identity and our way of living, which is influenced by our worldview and is necessarily rooted in our heritage, is considered an important factor in shaping our architectural product on different levels. Most importantly, its impact on the level of simplicity of, building, of a building, it also includes the interior allocation of space movement within a building and other architectural treatments related to privacy, climate, building materials and techniques, and many other direct material factors affecting various design decisions. All of the above is obvious. However, what is more, more important is that our immersion in religion, which is an obligation upon every Muslim, and our attachment to the Holy Quran, Sunnah, and the Seerah, i.e. the biography of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are enough to change our ethics, our condition, and our mood, so that we can deeply change. In Allah la yughayru ma biqawmin, hatta yughayru ma biqawmin. Allah changes not the condition of a folk until they first change that which is in their hearts, which is in, inside them. To be truly faithful, mukhlis, is it is only then we will build the way that will please Allah. The Ihsan. This is Ihsan. What pleases Allah? Allahu yuhibbu al And God loves the, the ones who are accident in heart. Yeah. His Prophet and the faith. Pleases Allah, His Prophet and the faith. وَقُلْ أَعْمَلُوا فَسَيَرُوا اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ الْمُؤْمِنِ only then our building and architecture will be righteous. It is in those righteous buildings that we will find the truth of Islamic architecture and of course dwelling, the true concept of dwelling, the subject that occupied so many scholars and researchers for decades and decades questioning and arguing about its true meaning and distinctive characteristics. Well, the houses of Marrakesh in Morocco, the Riyadh houses, Look how beautiful they are. Even, even, even Orientalists, they were, they were, were bewitched by the, the, the beauty. Look at the Alhambra, even if it's a palace. Look at the, look at the house of the Sahimi house. The, even the architectonics, the, 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 the spatial allocation, the, 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 the functions, the, Name it whatever you want to name it in architectural terms. It is fun. It is interesting. It is beautiful. It is uh, 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 serene. Huh? It is a an, mutabawa. An, uh, 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 mutabawa in Arabic, something you return to. To, of course, to, uh, 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 to uh, uh, experience. Peace, peace. We are after peace. Um, uh, and we, we are saying all that talk and all that uh, 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 theory, if you want to call it, is something that should go into the metaphorical veins and of the architects. We don't want architects to sit down and theorize. We want architects to educate themselves in the, in the proper sense of education, to be well, to be wise. We want wise architects, wise in the, pro, in the proper sense of wisdom, you know. And all wise architects produce good and wise buildings. In Bangladesh, in Latin America, look at uh, in, in, in some Muslim architects are still on the Hassan Fathi, look at the heritage of Hassan Fathi, the legacy of Hassan Fathi. I, I, I don't like domes and vaults, actually, but Hassan Fathi is a poet. Because what is poetry? Poet, uh, Heidegger says, has an essay poetically, man. So what is poetry? It's living with. Because what is poetry? Poet, uh, Heidegger says,
has an essay poetically now. What is poetry? It's living with meaning. You live with meaning, right? Okay? okay? When we call for the necessity of not just being influences, uh, uh, being influenced by, but also constantly evoking heritage, we do not call for imitation or parroting at all. For we have already criticized that. We, on the other hand, want to act like bees do. We should absorb the various nectars, which, if that is the proper term, which our heritage carries, let them ferment and mature, and then secrete them, extending our rich and multifaceted civilization and heritage. A goodly saying, as a goodly tree is root, its root is set firm, this is the verse that we uh, uh, quoted previously, its branches reaches, reaching into heaven, it is therefore very wise to say, show me how you build, and I will tell you who you are. Show me how you build, and I will tell you who you are. Uh, uh, or, uh, uh, speak, and so I can see you, like Socrates said, speak and, so when somebody speaks, I as an architect can understand and expect what the, what the manner that he is going to uh, build in, you know? And that is the, the, this is how we, sometimes we, we get into conflicts with the clients. Every architect knows that, you know? He speaks and you see him. And you, and you say, oh, 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 what a building this is going to be like, you know what I mean? So, uh, show me how you build and I will tell you who you are, for architecture is a true expression of the meaning of human existence. So let's take a break and I'll drink my seventh coffee. Engineer Talat, uh, we will end with this section. I just wanted to say, and if, if I may just have a minute, um, you rotated around, a lot around the parable of a good, a good saying is like a good tree set firm in the ground, its branches are set in the heaven and it brings about its fruits every, every, every other season. This uh, verse is in the chapter of Ibrahim, of Prophet Ibrahim. And we believe Prophet Ibrahim to be the father of all Abrahamic faiths, of course, or the Prophet sent for all Abrahamic faiths. And he is the one who set the foundations for the Kaaba, which in the sacred architecture is the cube. He put those foundations and he set them firm in the ground. And so, uh, from my perspective, many people might not see the Prophet Ibrahim as a, as a builder, but to me, he is a builder, he is an architect, he is the father of sustainable engineering, if you want to put it in those terms. Well, I'm, 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 I'm um, uh, uh, sustainability and sustain. The, this word is a bit uh, fishy to me. You know what I mean? So, uh, and sustainability, uh, I, I, I think it's something to cure something. You know what I mean? And we should build wisely. Wisely. Yes. You know what I mean? It's what? It's a definition. It's a point. Of because definition. because the way I think which is something that I have to confess and, and explain to people. I think in terms of language, I learned that from reading Heidegger, and I applied that to the uh, Arabic uh, texts that I read. I like to uh, yani, contemplate the words and meanings and see the fresh and original Meaning, you know, Heidegger said that language is the house of being, and he, he was very fond of etymology. When he talks about Baun and Vonian, and see Vonian in, 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 in I, I don't know, in uh, old uh, German or old go uh, Gothic uh, language, and Vonian in Arabic, and, you know, they, they have it. I think in terms of language. When I used to think in English, because I used to think, I lived in London for, for quite a while, and I used to write in English, I produced nothing. I went into circles. 
But when I started thinking in Arabic and relying on the Quran, it was I, 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 what I'm saying. Any anybody could uh, anybody who reads why, the Quran. Why couldn't you produce? Why couldn't you produce anything when you were thinking in English? Why is that? Because the 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 core of my thinking is relationships between Arabic meanings, Arabic words. It's your mother tongue. You mean to say it's where it's my mother words. tongue. It's it's. it's, it's the the are coming I, 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 yani, it, it, it's 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 like dancing, you know. It's like dancing. Uh, you flow with the meanings. You go from one meaning. You jump from one milestone to, from one anchor to the other anchor. You, this word gives you an idea. It's expla it explains itself. When you say sakan, sukun, maskan, you know. Ah, these words relates to each other. So what is sakan? A ball coming to stand still. This is peace. You can say the ball, uh, the, I came to peace. I came to a standstill. My soul came to a standstill, to rest. There is a relationship between sukun and, even in English, when we're saying the relationship between peace and rest, and you know, I think I think of a good friend of mine, Abdullah Osman, uh, who is a very good um, a writer. Um, he understands that better than me because I, I'm not a, a, a man of language. But I think this is the way language works. This is the way language works. Language is very sophisticated, and. It, 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 if, uh, these are the ideas I always think I, I always think of. Uh, new ideas come to me all the time. You know, it's a continuous in Arabic. It's a continuous. I I, I uh, borrow from the Quran. I depend. Let's put it in the right words. I depend. See, depend on the Quran and the Sunnah and the Islamic tradition and the biography of the Prophet, and the, 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 the hadith. I depend on that. I contemplate that. I look at these, um, at that vast and rich body of relationship between being and man, you know, between history and man, with the eyes of a a curious child, and all architect, all true architects are children. They playing, they are playing games, um, games in the in the in the, they are playful. You know, they jump from one idea to the other. Uh, children are like that. Children always um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, they they surprise they surprise you with. Uh, very beautiful and uh, profound and deep questions that sometimes parents cannot answer. You know, uh, a child. W we should be all. We should all be children, children seeking wisdom. You see, and then I I, I will end my my this this uh, episode, and I will return to the first example and application to heritage. In a down-to-earth way, you know, which I uh, recall the extended family. See, extended families are start with the with the, of course with parents, but we have a child and a grandfather. Curiosity and wisdom. See the beauty of the extended family. Yes. And then take a fade to black. You know, I will move the camera to a man and a woman sitting on a dining table 
I want you to imagine the extended family. The, 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 the man is praying and then he's, he is reclining and he's, he has his sibha in his hands and he's murmuring the Quran and the, ch the child goes to him and the, the woman is, uh, you know, doing the vegetables and someone is drinking coffee in the ma'ad and the courtyard and the uh, uh, house of Damascus and the, the, the Riyadh of Morocco and, uh, and Marrakesh. Huh? Even in India, even in Japan, all the ceremonies, all the rituals, all the richness. Huh? And then take a f move the camera to a flat apartment building with the dining, small round dining table with a man and his wife sitting, you know, looking at each other, coming from a very, very hard and harsh work environment, whether it's through corporate slavery or through, you know, uh, factory slavery or modernity, uh, uh, what do you call it, Madaniya? What did that bring us? Where did that take us? And they don't have time for contemplation. They don't have, they don't have time for being human, you know? It is sad. It is sad. And I am speaking that I'm not I'm not theorizing. I'm I am saying that and and believe me, when I'm talking now, I'm 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 taking you like a, I'm making a small film, you know, a small scenario with the eyes of a an innocent child. Why? Why all that sadness? Why all that uh, suffering? Because of what? Of a, of a smartphone? You know? A, 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 a motor car? Individualism? Who says that we should be individuals? In the, look at the Japan and what is happening in Japan. They are refusing to be married. You know? They are skipping out schools and education. They have the, well, I don't know what's called technological what, they, they don't want even to be social, they want to, to every one of them, you know, uh, modern Japan, I'm not speaking of the, you know, you know, these are the diseases of modernity. To end with what we, I think we said, for, for your very wise uh, interpretations, which are a blessing from Allah to you, Yanni. Uh, three people never never lose awe of the world. The child, the beginner, and the believer. So be one, or be two, or be all of them. Yeah, this is very beautiful to end the uh, episode. We hope to see you all soon in episode three. Yeah, we're going to talk in episode three. We're going to talk about the, let me, let me just problems related to heritage. Yeah, the problems, because because heritage, uh, uh, there are traps. When you deal with heritage, you can fall into traps. And there are, um, um, uh, uh, and people have accused uh, traditionalists with a lot of uh, uh, accusations. But we are going to talk about renewal versus novelty. We are going to talk about tradition versus traditionalism. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting way uh, to end this uh, talk. I, 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 I've talked too much, but uh, yeah, no, thank, you, thank you for having me. I think it was and finally in tune the whole premise, the whole understanding and concept for it to be clear for the listener to apply it in their own practice and in their lives as well. Yeah, that was, that's, what I, that's what I'm aiming for. Uh, uh, in Arabic, we say infa'al. Infa'al. All we want uh, is for people to yanfa'al. Be moved. Be moved. You know? You know? Infa'al is, uh, fa'al is verb. Fa'al is doing. Interact. interact. To interact. Interact with emotion and excitement. With all their faculties, with all yes. their, their being, the wholeness of the human being. Thank you, Junior and thank you all for tuning in and for listening, and we'll see you soon in episode three, the final episode. Thank you all. See you soon.
Take care.